I'm Nicole Petalides. It's time for the disruptors, and George Sillis is with us every day, taking a look at today's disruptor, and that would be PayPal. TD Cowan, a new note on this stock. What do we need to know, George? Well, I think, uh, you know, looking at PayPal, Nicole, I mean, the stock is obviously down a lot this uh, this last year alongside the, uh, the non-bank financials, which have taken a hit, but uh, maybe the stock is starting to look interesting, perhaps, from a growth and valuation standpoint. I think that's what TD Cowan essentially is really looking at here with their call. They're initiating coverage on the stock with a market perform rating, which is basically a, a hold rating, if you will, uh, with a price target around $66. You actually see, you know, the stock or the company itself uh, is quite compelling right now, considering, you know, you know, the brand itself is very popular from the standpoint of uh, business to consumer payments, but also if you think about Venmo, consumer to consumer-based payments, but the company is actually broadening out quite a bit. I mean, they've got a division called Braintree, which is in mobile and e-commerce payment solutions, Zettle, which is point of sale software and services, uh, and of course, uh, their, their, their uh, mainstay PayPal division, which again, from the standpoint of business and consumers, really has a first mover advantage uh, from, from the standpoint of having been around so long. I think if you look at the, uh, the performance of the stock, obviously to the downside this year, alongside with Bitcoin, FinTech, uh, and the other uh, non-bank financials, as well as some of the other larger financials, um, it's starting to look compelling because if you consider the, uh, the uh, news that the company posted back in June, they actually sold their uh, buy now, pay later business to KKR, which is a private equity firm for about $1.8 billion. And at the same time, they've actually initiated a $5 billion share buyback. Now, looking at the profitability of PayPal, its net income is around 14% of earnings, with uh, earnings growth estimates for the next year about 6%. And it's trading around only around 11 times forward earnings. So there may be a valuation call here as well for PayPal, all else equal, assuming uh, the financial industry, perhaps, and even interest rates start to settle down a bit. And, of course, uh, we start to see some industry group uh, particip participation back to the upside. Right, understood. So at this point now, after hitting those low levels, uh, you know, going back to 2017, yeah. what, how would you go about an example trade? Yeah, so this is, you know, you have to think about this a little bit because you, you, obviously the trend is to the downside, so we can't fight the trend. I'm not here to say I know when bottoms are going to happen, I can't pick bottoms. But at the same time, if you look at the uh, the earnings announcement coming up, it's in early November. So we can participate until then with some, some parameters. So what we can do very simply is uh, based upon the stock price right now, over $57, we're going to sell an out of the money um, cash secured put. And we're going to sell the $55 put. Now that uh, has a delta that we're selling about 35 delta, which implies that the market is probability is expecting a 65% chance it'll stay above 55 between now and expiration to 42 days. Now, selling that put, you can actually earn about $2.50 a share in credit or $250 in contract. So if you do the math, that $2.50 is basically a 4.5% 4, 4 yield to strike in 42 days. But at the same time, you have over a 7.5% uh, flexibility to the downside before your break even is hit at 52.50. So the stock could actually j continue to just drift lower. Ideally speaking, we like it to stay above 55, but we're not at risk of losing in this trade, assuming you get assigned shares at 55 until the stock is below 52.50. Like I said, is below uh, that's that's another seven and a half percent to the downside. So I have to keep in mind also with that earnings coming out uh, in early November. This trade actually will expire after earnings. So if you put on this kind of trade, you could certainly consider exiting it before earnings. Right. Understood. George Stillis, thank you so much for that. A great week of disruptors. Appreciate it.